the oil and gas industry, the home of innovation, cutting edge technology, and the extraordinary people who make it all happen. Together, we're powering the world. Here are the stories of business builders who are leading the way in the energy sector. This is Zebra Marketing Solutions Oil and Gas Business Builders Podcast, where we explore the real experiences of today's leaders in business growth, with key takeaways to start implementing right now in our own companies. And now here is your host, Laura Kamrath. All right. Hi, Casey. Welcome to the Oil and Gas Business Builders podcast. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Laura. Awesome. And I hope all of our listeners are doing well as well, wherever you may be at. We're uh, coming up to the end of the year, 2020. It's been a very interesting and event-filled and fun-filled year. Um, either positive or negative, uh, definitely has been different. Um, I'm pretty sure that I would expect almost none of us are where we thought we would be (laughs) about this time last year. So uh, a lot has changed. Um, Casey here is with us. Uh, He has a very interesting background. He is the uh, founder of Energy Funders, CEO of Energy Funders. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about Casey here. Casey Minshew is an accomplished sales and marketing executive with over 20 years of building scalable companies. As CEO of EnergyFunders.com, he successfully led the company during startup, revenue growth, and through the merger with paleo resources is it paleo or palilo paleo you're right paleo okay sorry uh paleo resources inc casey has an extensive background in technology energy and fin fine tech <laughs> casey brings deep knowledge and experience growing early stage ventures into hyper growth scalable organizations with years of experience serving as an advisor to the startup community He brings a strong history of building teams and developing systems and processes that scale organizations by identifying and optimizing their unique growth potential. Casey earned his BA in accounting with Texas State University. Go Cats. Very, very accomplished man. (laughs) So thank you. Yeah. So tell me, Casey, tell me a little bit more about energyfunders.com. How did you uh, come up with the idea? Did you have partners? Uh, how did you bring that idea to fruition? And, uh, you know, the awesome business that it is now. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, you can't do anything by yourself. I mean, very few people can build something that's kind of done some of the things that we've done at Energy Funders. Very challenging um, industry, challenging scalable model. And uh, to lead it through an acquisition and to continue to grow it, is, it's just been a blessing. But um, we've had a lot of partners along the way. Um, my two main partners are Philip Rackison and Michael Rackison, um, twins here in, in Houston, Texas, and just phenomenal partners. And then we added people along the way that became, you know, equity owners. And, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a nice journey. So in 2014 uh, is when the company launched. And, um, if you remember that, uh, we had our other oil depression right about that time, um, right mid part of the year. And, um, when the concept, when I met the, the two brothers who had, you know, created this concept, um, I was like, man, what a great time to enter the space. You know, I mean, whew, it, it, lack of capital, you know, we're going to have, we're going to be the funding platform for it. Um, thinking that, you know, we would have a nice rebound in 16 or 17 or 18. And we never really did, right? Yeah. It's just it's just been a tough, tough industry and market, which I think sometimes makes you tough and makes your business model pivot and change and all of those great things. Um, but really our value proposition was to bring the retail market direct to the oil and gas business without having to deal with promoters 
and people that are marking up costs um, that really take away a lot of what somebody, an investor can make a return on. Because when you deal with, you know, brokers and you deal with other middle mar- middlemen, um, you pay fees. And um, in, a, in a very low oil, you know, low oil price market, um, every dollar that's not going into the ground and going into somebody's pocket takes away from your return. And these are already tough. These are already tough enough assets, right? And so that led us down the journey of really building the platform to disintermediate. And that's the big buzzword. Um, now, real estate scaled beautifully from 2012. So platforms like Realty Mogul, Cadre, I mean, you'll see them, they're billion dollar plus platforms. Um, you've probably heard of a company called Angels List and Crowder. But you've heard of all different types of platforms for the startup space. But when you start talking about the energy space, you, really it's up. And uh, there's been other ones that have tried to scale platforms here. But what becomes such a challenge is if you don't have somewhat control of the assets, right? If you're, if you're not an operator or understand those, being a non-op working interest partner can be, vi- can be a loss. Um, it can be very challenging. And so we've been fortunate enough to survive to, um, with our merger, um, bring partners on that not only own oil and gas reserves, but have been operating for a very long time profitably with their own money. And now with our integration, being able to provide investors, you know, good opportunities in a very tough market that offered the tax benefits, offer tax incentives, but um, also offers them the ability to own oil and gas in today's, you know, downward prices. And that's direct to the wellhead. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, see where you know launching a business in 2015 you know it's been kind of from one downturn to another downturn without really a recovery in between um so i mean how have you seen um the offerings that you've been able to to bring and um the invest investors uh have the investors been still uh engaged is it sort of a are people feeling like oil and gas is a risky uh, investment right now? That's kind of what I've heard. Um, sort of the word on the street is, uh, you know, people are just feeling like oil and gas is a risky investment. How do you feel about that? No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think oil and gas is always a risky investment. Um, now, there's different types of ways to invest that, that, that mitigate a lot of those risks. Mm-hmm. Um, from 14 to really 2009 through 2019, we fo- focused primarily on exploration, which yeah. is the highest tier risk you can do in oil and gas. And um, which they're exciting investments. They've got potential big upside, but they also have a high failure rate. And so we too moved um, in 2020 prior to COVID, we had rolled out what we call a yield fund, which is more of a, a drill co structure. And if you look up a drill co, um, there are very favorable terms to a private equity. They just have capped upsides, but the product is lower risk. Mm-hmm. And then we're rolling out our, our, here at the end of the year, we're rolling out our first income fund, which is actually buying produ- production. It's already buying producing assets at today's prices. So every kind of different buy that you have, you can even do minerals where some people would say right now is the best time to buy, mm-hmm. right? We, we, we've survived COVID. We've seen the worst we've ever seen. Is it going to get better from here? Um, and then those are kind of the, that's part of the risk of, of knowing what you're investing in. But what most people look at when they come to energy funders is, you know, it's usually that person that's, um, one, it's accredited investors only. So they fall in that accreditation bracket. But usually what we see are people that have either are high income wage earners. They had a very, very big exit or they had, a, you know, some type of capital infusion where they need to offset some tax liability. They, they're looking for investments that are going to give them deductions. Oil and gas offers them. They're, they're, they're excellent. Yeah. The challenge yeah. is, is that the industry has sold those deductions, but they forget to talk about the loss of capital, right? Yeah. You, may get, you may get 30% back, but if you lose 70%, you, you don't want to keep doing that. And yeah. so having, having lower risk, risk products that can provide those same deductions are critical. Uh-huh. And uh, so I think that that, you know, our, our avatar, that person that's investing here, one, they see the upside in the industry, but, you know, most of our projections and analysis that we do are at today's prices. We don't mark it up like 10 years from now and tell you what your ROI is. We're looking at today's prices. Mm-hmm. Huh. 
Awesome. So um, talking about, you know, investment and we are coming up to the end of the year. Um, I'm sure there are some tax benefits to, you know, making investments, you know, for the, by the end of the year. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know um, you've probably been having a pretty busy end of 2020. Um, can you talk a little bit about the uh, sort of end of year benefits? Yeah. And uh, no, it's a great segue here. So, um, you know, oil and gas offers some direct oil and gas investments offer really incredible tax benefits. Um, no, number one, the biggest one is called an intangible drilling cost. And um, it, an intangible drilling cost are the things you can't see, the hole in the ground, but it makes up about, I'd say about anywhere between 60 and 80% of your cost to drill a well. Um, those intangible drilling costs, 100% is deductible in the year you make your investment. So um, that's, that's a big deduction. Now, one of the other ones is your tangible drilling cost, which are things like the, the actual pump jack or the, the infrastructure that you put in the pumps or the, uh, the, the barrels, the gun barrels. You know, those type things are your tangible, the equipment. Well, be, th this year it's ending, but the, the, I, get, I believe it's 179 is the bonus depreciation acceleration where you can accelerate 100% of those in, in the year you make your investment. So an oil and gas investment, depending on the fund fees and the different costs, could you could see excess of 90% of your investment deductible in the year you make it. So an investor can come in. Now, it's not a tax credit. So people kind of get that confused. So you get a K-1. Um, in, in our case, you can be an, a general partner or a limited partner, just depending on how you need those deductions. And when you get your K-1, you, you got to look at your tax rate. You multiply that loss by your tax rate, and that's like dollars that you get back, okay? So the nice thing about an oil and gas investment is that it really offsets what, you're, what you invested. So if I put $100,000 in and I got $30,000 back on my taxes, my cost basis is 70. So I only need to get to 70,000 in order to break even. So, in, you know, that's kind of how they look at it. So there's the before tax internal rate of return or rate of return. And then there's the after tax. Now, most people, most investors don't want to invest for a tax loss. In the oil and gas business, you get those losses if you win or lose. So it's not like you're investing for a loss. The, the, because these are construction-like projects, they're big, you know, they're drilling. Most people listening to this podcast know what it's like. Um, those costs are deductible. And that's kind of that, that piece. Um, and so this time of year, um, we talk to all different types of people that find us online that are looking for those, those type of assets. And we have two funds that have different risk. So we have a thing called our Wildcat Fund, which, you know, these are Wildcat exploration projects. And then we also have our Yield Fund, which are PUDs, which are proven undeveloped, uh, very high likely of, of production. And each one offers a different level of return but different risk profile. And so um, we find that most people this time of year that are new to the industry or have never made an investment, they usually invest in our yield funds hmm. um, because they're looking for the deductions. They're not looking for to make a home run. They're not looking for venture capital investment. They're looking for a good rate of return. And our yield fund offers a 15% IRR um, that you know we try to hit between a 12 and 15 month payback. And then once they hit that target return, they get a smaller interest in the well. But, and that pays out for the life of the well. So the bigger private equities use drill co's and we've just brought it down to the retail level. Yeah, huh. awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it yeah. can be so complex. That's, so when people start talking about, you know, well, let's look at a real estate investment compared to an oil and gas investment. You go, wow. I mean, this is like totally different type, you know, I mean, yeah. of, of, of requirements and skill sets. And that's what our platform's made to do. You know, we have geophysicists that we use as third parties to review. We have engineers that review and analyze our data. Um, we have a collaboration partner called Oil Rocks. And these guys are incredible. Um, and they're in the oil and gas space, great resumes, but engineers at a very high level. Um, and we have a team of professionals from the paleo resources side, you know, who they are in the, the, the exploration, they're an EMP company that evaluate and review these assets prior to going out. So from land, legal, due diligence and all of that stuff, that's what our fund does. So wow. the investor really has a fund manager. Now our platform, what, what, what's challenging 
in the scale, our, our value proposition scale, because energy funders doesn't make a dime if somebody invests. That's mm -hmm. not how we make money. We only make money if the wells are successful. Wow. So we get a, we get production. We get a royalty on the, We get an override on the production. But if you know, so we are highly incentivized, and everybody along the line is incentivized to make to to hopefully put up good projects. Wow. But you can imagine in in these tough markets to build a business model around scalability is challenging. Yeah. So that's why over the years we've been very good at you know I was able to to get a bunch of partners that love the idea of the platform, investors that have supported it. Houston's been huge for us. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people invested in the company. And then behind that, you know, we also uh, being online, a lot of our uh, people that ran across us invested in our company. Mm -hmm. And then paleo acquiring us this last year. Um, it's been, it's been really a, a, an interesting ride. Mm -hmm. um, but we believe we're at that point now where, you know, we've got a model and we have good product. And now we feel like now it's just time to let the industry recover as we deliver, you know, continuously great, great products. Wow. Yeah. Well, that sounds really attractive and awesome. And, you know, I definitely feel like I would have a lot more confidence investing knowing that you guys were doing all of that due diligence. Um, you know, it just sounds, sounds like a, a really great business model and opportunity. So it, it is a great business model with scale. If it yeah. never scales, then it becomes a very tough business because yeah. you can imagine that, the, the, think about it. Everybody that's listening to here, somebody's a reservoir engineer, someone's a geophysicist, somebody has a degree that when you work with a corporate company pays extremely well, right? Yeah. And so to have all of those people endorse and review and to look at your projects, everybody, you know, it's, it, so when you have a team, you know, that's why our merger was such a big deal was mm -hmm. now we have a team of experts that are, uh, that have a, but, you know, we really, you know, we're all looking at this to say, hey, we want people to have success so they continuously come back and reinvest. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like going to a restaurant. If you have a bad meal, the place could look beautiful. But if you yeah. have a bad meal, you're probably not coming back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the same if you have a bad experience, even though you go, Casey, man, this is great. The website looks great. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, just, you, you lose that customer. Yeah. And so we want to create not only a good look and a great feel business model, but really product that you go, hey, yeah. that worked. And so yeah. far, it's, it's, been a, it's been a good year on our products. And so we're excited really about our yield fund and our income funds. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely don't want any bad meals. <laughs> it sounds like you, well, you guys are offering a lot of good meals. So that sounds really great. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing our best. It's still the oil and gas business and there still yeah. has its levels of risk, but we're doing our best. Yes. Awesome. So um, you mentioned earlier uh, when we were chatting that you guys have, um, you have an interest with alternative energy as well. Um, you know, we've elected a new presidential administration and a lot of people uh, think that the country is going to be going more, uh, in, you know, in a greener direction. So can you tell me a little bit about your alternative energy ventures and how you think maybe the, the country might be changing, how our listeners might be able to grow their business in a greener direction? Uh, can you talk to us a little bit, uh, a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, we're energy funders. So we we wanted, we our intention was always to provide access to energy, all energy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it just so happens that oil and gas, um, you know, became something that no one else was really focused on. And good projects can return capital fairly quickly. So these, these have these cool components. So we focused, especially in a startup phase, on one thing. Um, now, with this, this, this shift, you know, it, we've been looking, I mean, looking really for projects that make financial sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we have found is um, solar, um, commercial solar installation for large, um, large buildings in and around Texas can be, it can be equitable. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of benefits. And so we will be rolling out our first alternative energy solar project um, first of the year. And what's really nice about them is, is that we have a extremely high qualified 15-year um, company that is installing, um, you know, have installed for HEB. They've installed for companies that, that own warehouses and large distribution buildings. Mm -hmm. um, these are groups that are not, you know, they're going to be there 25 years from now. 
and they'll continue to pay their electric bill. And so what we do, um, what the company does, um, you know, that we are working with, they go to them and they show them by installing solar panels on their roof. And these, a lot of these solar panels are actually made by Tesla. Um, installing these solar panels on the roof, they can lower their kilowatt per hour, especially over 25 years. And so as an investment group, what we do is we would invest in the solar panels. We own the solar panels and we have a purchase, a power purchase agreement with the, um, the tenant. So our first project that we're looking at first of the year is with the school district and it's down in South Texas. And basically, you know, we're saving somewhere between two and four million. We're saving them two to four million dollars in just kilowatts per hour over the next 25 years. Mm-hmm. And so we're doing good for the school. Number two, you know, number two, you know, it is it is a good investment for an investor because you're getting paid the electric bill. And so because we own the solar panels, uh, they pay out over 25 years. There's very little maintenance um, that, that's required to continue with these. Um, we don't have to worry about if you find oil or not. <laughs> you know, the, once the, the sun shines and it seemed to have shined all the time in these days, you know, there's nice reports on the areas that we do it. Um, But the investor, here's what's pretty neat, is that um, with current administration and current tax rules, um, they're offering a 22% tax credit when you you invest into solar. So what's nice, different than oil and gas, is that in oil and gas, you take, you know, you put in your investment, and then you have to take a percentage of that as your deduction, and there's an offset. Here, when you invest, you get a 22% tax credit straight line. Wow. So if I put $100,000 in, I'm going to get a $22,000 tax credit. Wow. Yeah. I don't have to be a general partner or take any you know, risk. I get that. Now, you mentioned the new administration coming in, some of the changes that they're going to modify, which is they're going to push the tax credit to 2025, and they're going to give a 30% tax credit on, the, wow. on that. So then, so now when you look at the oil and gas investment to the solar, you actually are getting more of a tax credit on the solar side. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. It's not, it's not just about the tax credit. It's, it's also about what is my return? And so typically on the purchase power agreements, these run between six and 8% per year is about the return profile. And when you stick the tax, when you get the tax credit in there, you, obviously it lowers your cost basis. So when you get your return, it, it increases that, that return. Yeah. And so, um, but there's no risk of losing the capital uh, because the school district's been there for 40 years, you know, and the different types of places that we're going are, are usually these very, very well in a municip- municipalities type structures. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so here, here's what it does though. I mean, at the end of the day, we're never going to stop funding oil and gas. We're pro oil and gas. We're a pro oil and gas company. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's beautiful about the mixture of the products is, is that, we and then we invest in it. And so if you think about for every oil and gas wells that we have out in the field producing, we're also installing solar. And so at some point you really kind of become a carbon neutral platform, not because that's what we set out to be. It just so happens to be that way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it kind of goes back to finding good product, focusing on having a good meal and then delivering a good meal. And so, Next year, yeah, not because of the new administration. It just kind kind of fit into the timing. Um, we'll be focusing on a solar fund, and a lot of these solar funds also follow follow um, qualify in these opportunity zones. And so there'll be some cool things that we push out in 2021 at the first part that will allow investors to um, have you know not only direct oil and gas investment, but they can also look at the solar side as well. Awesome. That's yeah, pretty, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, Especially you know. Neat. I, I know uh, I know oil and gas tends to get a bad rap for you know you know people think it's polluting and and have you know people who are not in oil and gas often tend to not have good things to say about the industry um, but you know I know tons of people in the industry and I know that you know oil and gas can tend to be the people who are the most concerned about the you know the environment because we often know what we're really facing and, and the real challenges that the, the country and the world have in that regard. We're probably some of the most educated people about the problem and, and how much of a challenge it is to solve. So that's, that's pretty awesome that you guys are kind of 
doing something green, making an impact there, and also giving opportunities to other people. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that uh, we're, we're, oil and gas is not going away. Um, other energy sources will play its part. Uh -huh. um, but I think at the end of the day, when people come back 10, 15 years from now, I think they're going to look back and say, hey, you know, it was the most cost effective, you know, energy provider source of energy, which is oil and gas. Um, yeah. I believe that. doesn't mean I'm 100 percent right, but it does mean yeah. that that's what I believe. And so, um, you know, we are still you know, focused on the oil and gas industry, finding good assets that we can provide people and, and participate in the industry. And, um, you know, as we have this recovery over the next, you know, two, three, five years, you know, Energy Funders wants to play a part in getting to the right independents that are doing good projects and providing them capital. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, private equity is fleeing. Um, a lot of the banks and capital are leaving. Yeah. Um, and so where is the capital going to come from? Well, mm -hmm. we, we, we ask our operators all the time, like, look, either you make your money on the front end or you make your money <clears throat> on the back end. We prefer you make your money from the well, on the oil and gas. Mm -hmm. And if we do that with our investors, we'll have a long line of people wanting to invest with us. But if you're, if you're constantly, you know, making investments so you can make all your upfront cost. You know, there's, 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 there's got to be a middle ground. And I believe that the disintermediation that we set out to do in 2014 um, is really starting to come into line. I believe mm -hmm. it's, we are making that shift where we're now talking to independents that are really not what we call promoting. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really getting down to the, to the nitty gritty. Hey, I want to drill these wells and I want to produce them. Great. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get the investor in alignment with you. And if we can get you guys in alignment, then we can do a project. But if we can't, mm -hmm. hey. And, and again, it's the golden rule, right? And yeah. as, it, as we scale and we have bigger, you know, in bigger pieces, we can start dictating a lot more rules to the operator saying, hey, this is how capital has to be. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not going to be the same as it's always been. Um, things are changing. Uh, uh -huh. and, and platforms like Energy Funders, and there'll be others that come along. You know, we want to give those investors the, the best possible um, scenarios because we want to serve good food and have repeat business over and over again. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, could you uh, let me know a resource? Uh, do you have a recommendation for a resource that might be useful to our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I've been an, an entrepreneur for 20 years, um, have built different companies. And um, the hardest part of, I think, a business is the operating system, you know, creating mm -hmm. an operational type structure, a process, and getting everybody on the same page. And so mm -hmm. my favorite book right now is Traction, uh, EOS, the Entrepreneur um, Operating System. Um, love it, you know, applying it, um, rereading it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. So I highly suggest it for those that are, that are in that business of, hey, I'm going to grow yeah. my business or I want to rescale my goals for 2021. Kind yeah. of dig back into that book. It's a great resource. Yeah, absolutely. We actually had another guest on recently, Lori Clements, and she is with uh, Springboard Solutions. And she's actually an EOS consultant. So she actually goes in and helps people implement nice. those solutions. So um, definitely love that resource. Thanks for sharing it with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Are you on LinkedIn or your website? How's the best way? Yep. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm Casey Minshew, C-A-S-E-Y, and then it's M-I-N-S-H-E-W. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also at energyfunders.com. You can find my, my book bio and contact us. Anyway, it's, it's easy to get a hold of me. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you very much, Casey. It's been really, really great having you on the show. Um, I loved your tidbits about end of your uh, tax benefits and just the investment opportunities in general. Uh, Energy Funder sounds like a great company and uh, you sound like a very accomplished person. So we're extremely pleased to have you and bring your knowledge to our listeners. Thanks, Laura. Um, I appreciate what you're doing. This is awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Casey. And thank you all to the oil and gas business builders listeners. Uh, tune in next time to uh, hear from our next guest. Looking forward to it. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, uh, happy holidays, Christmas, New Year, and uh, wishing everyone the best for 2021. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Casey. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to Zebra Marketing Solutions Oil & Gas Business Builders Podcast. Join our Oil & Gas Business Builders groups on LinkedIn and Facebook and see our videos on YouTube and on OGBBmedia.com. Visit ZMSEnergyMarketing.com to learn more about how we can help you and your business design and implement a marketing strategy to retain and attract customers, grow revenues, and gain market share. Join us on the next episode for more great takeaways from business builders who are leading the way in the energy sector.